Hello Butterfish fam and welcome or welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about a very popular topic within the fish keeping community, especially those with betta fish tanks. We're going to be talking about ram's horn snails. If you've been in the hobby long enough, you know exactly what a ram's horn snail is, but if you're not, allow me to explain just a little bit. Ram's horn snails are a type of snail that live in freshwater. They don't grow very large, very fast, and I believe the adult size is probably about the size of a penny, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of times because they don't grow very fast, they're only going to be really, really small for quite some time. Really, really tiny. These snails are quite prevalent in many freshwater tanks, especially in those of more experienced fish keepers. I was a beginner not too long ago and I realized that something that happens a lot of times in the fish keeping community is that beginners are almost taught to fear these snails. I know that I was in the beginning, so let me explain that just a little bit. Because these snails really don't need a mate to lay eggs, they can do so on their own, your tank can very quickly, in theory, become overrun by these snails. You can have just way too many of them and they just may not look aesthetically pleasing or they may not look as great as you had hoped. And once they're in there, you really can't take them out because there are so many. And like I said, they're really small, so it's easy to miss them. And as they grow up, they're just gonna lay more eggs. So this is kind of my thought going into it because I had heard a lot of almost horror stories about these snails and how awful they are and how you really do not want them in your tank. So with everything I had, every single time I would buy a new freshwater plant. Because these little snails are often hitchhikers, so either you're gonna buy them from someone, get them from someone, or you're gonna get them hitchhiking in on a freshwater plant from the pet store. So anytime I would get a new plant, I would check over every single leaf. And it was hard work. It was really hard work because you even have to look for the eggs and they're small and they're clear and you can miss that a lot of times. But somehow I did really well for the first year or two and my tanks were com and my tank was completely snail free. I did not want these ram's horn snails because I was just absolutely terrified. <laughs> Once I started getting into the hobby a little bit deeper and I had gotten more experience, I started looking at the more experienced pros, the ones with the betta fish and freshwater tanks. And most often they end up being betta fish tanks. So I would look at these people and I would look at their tanks and they were wild. They had lots of live plants. They had snails and they had ram's horn snails and I started to ask myself are these snails really as evil as they were made out to be in the beginning? So fast forward a few months later I got a second tank which stay tuned because I will be picking up my big boy soon for the tank. I know I've been talking about him a lot but I finally have a date to pick him up. As I was setting up this tank I started thinking a little bit more about these ram's horn snails and because I had gotten a lot of plants from a friend, she had a bunch of them so they're obviously on the plant. So I had some kind of in my extra little box of plants. I had some ram's horn snails just kind of swimming or <laughs> strolling around, whatever they do. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna put them in my 10 gallon. I am just gonna kind of take the leap because there's nothing in the tank right now and the benefits have really been quite amazing, so much so that I put some in William's tank. So you may be wondering what those benefits are. The first benefit that I really, really noticed was that they helped me cycle the tank. Because this was a brand new tank, I needed to get it cycled, but I didn't want to do a fish in cycle, I wanted to do a fish list cycle. So I needed a source of ammonia. Because I put these snails in there, their waste helped to provide the ammonia that I needed, and I had it cycled in a few weeks. The other benefit that I've noticed, and I am almost certain that it is because of these snails, is that the plants in my 10 gallon are actually doing a lot better than the plants in my 5 gallon, which may seem weird, but I started looking at it and I realized I have a bunch of the ram's horn snails in my 10 gallon, and I suspect that their waste has something to do with it, using the nutrients in some way. And of course, I am still using fertilizer, but I'm using fertilizer in William's tank as well. And I really didn't see that amount of rapid growth that I saw 
in his tank. Another huge thing for me was that I did not have to do any maintenance whatsoever in the tank apart from doing bi-weekly water changes just because they don't have any fish in there yet. These snails do produce a lot of waste, so you are going to want to siphon it out, siphon out the rocks every week or two. However, there really is no algae anywhere in the tank. The leaves are clean. The glass is clean. I think I went over it once within the last four months just because there were a few patches that they seemed to be missing. Lastly, I just found that it was a very lively addition to the tank. These little snails just make it a lot of fun to look into the tank. They're constantly moving around, they're very active, and they are quite fast. So you can enjoy just sitting and watching them zoom around or you can play a little game of I Spy. Sometimes I do that. Where are the snails? So should you put ram-thorn snails in your tank if you haven't yet? The answer to that, it's entirely up to you. If you want to have some snails in your tank, if you have feared them before, you may want to just take a little time, look into the benefits yourself and see if it's worth it for you. I know for me it was entirely worth it. I no longer fear ram-thorn snails and I'm honestly better because of it. Another thing to mention is that a lot of times Benefish will help you take care of the ramsworm population. Why is that? Because the babies stay small for a long period of time. They do not grow quickly and that keep, makes them very open to predators such as the Benefish. They will actually eat the ones that are too small to escape. That will also provide benefits for your Beta because it's a lot closer to what their diet would be in the wild. It's free fresh food that I really don't have to worry about. As always, I have a free Facebook group I would love for you to join. That will be linked in the description as well. And I have a free guide up right now on creating a community tank. It just lists a few things you want to consider and it lists some of the fish that are highly compatible with bettas and would make great tank mates if you want to go in that direction. I hope you and your betta have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.